Hello everybody, I am Count Christo and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 Black Ice Mod with our new glorious Panzer Divisions tearing their way towards the final little Japanese pocket down here in the uh, Shanxi, Shanxi? Guan, Guanxi clique region? I don't know, we're going to crush in here, take them out, nice and then head over here to uh, launch a lightning strike along these ports on the coast should be easy enough and that will crush the, the resistance in the south by annihilating their supply base. Should be grand. Black defense is one. I think I'm just going to go through all of these. Uh, get a bunch of uh, anti-air around the place. Like I said in the previous episode, I really don't know. Look at that soft attack in the day. It's glorious. <clears throat> I really don't know how, uh, how AI bombing is in Black Ice, but... Uh, I don't want to find out to my detriment, so. So we'll go with this. I probably won't build much on my, uh, you know, under my own steam, but if we can get some freedom focuses, that seems that seems pretty reasonable. All right, let's crush along here. Look at that, glorious. Our tanks are, they're not unstoppable, but they're getting there. Need a little bit of support attack here, please. Great. In terms of deficits, it's probably just... Uh, ooh, there's an infantry gun deficit right now. Interesting. So we've caught up on handheld anti-tank. Excellent. It's time to do this then. Well, we're not going to kill anti-tank because we have... Do we have any production efficiency retention? It's actually negative. Okay, so let me explain something uh, mechanically quickly. If you have positive production efficiency retention, you should never do this and leave yourself with... Uh, free military factories by removing them. What you should have done is queued up what you wanted, then removed the factories, thereby granting yourself slightly higher starting production efficiency retention, equivalent to, you know, how much it would have dropped, plus the percent that you have retention of the amount above that. So if you're going to drop from 100 to 50, and when you have 1% retention, it would go from 100 to 50.5. 0.5 being 1% of 50. Right? One, two. No, that's wrong. 0 0.05? The number isn't entirely important. <laughs> the moral of this story is that if you, uh, yeah, if you're removing factories and you have positive production efficiency retention, don't just remove them. Always make sure they're going somewhere first. Okay, so we're going to ramp up infantry gun production because I think infantry guns are one of the things that tends to be a really big deficit. They're they're very production in intensive. Six compared to you know field uniforms, which point 0.3. In fact, we should dial back on the field uniforms. Now I, now I spot that. Because that's this, we're producing crazy amounts of these. Same with the Car 98s, actually. We're going to cut back substantially on infantry production. <clears throat> Support equipment. We're not producing it very fast. It looks like we don't use much. Let's cut back on that, too. Mechanized, we're not going to cut back on. Uh, because we're going to build a bunch of mechanized divisions. Cav equipment, my lord. Okay, we're going to cut back on that heavily. We might need to go back into these later, but that's fine. I have no I have no problem with that. Upgrading recon slightly faster seems valuable to me. <clears throat> these are motorcycle recon. They use exclusively for our tank divisions and motorized... Excuse me. Mechanized divisions. We can dial back on that. Uh, we're overproducing... Under, we're barely producing enough heavy artillery, so let's slightly increase that. Uh, and since we slightly increased that... Maybe we want to move up, improve our prime movers. But no, we're looking okay because those those have to be one to one. So, wait, is that right? Kind of surely those should be one to one. So actually, let's let's maximise the efficiency here and uh, and ramp up the pressure a bit. Mm, that would require us to get some tungsten. I'd rather avoid importing any extra goods if we can. Okay, and it's time for plane production. I think so. Let's go hard. On plane production, which is going to require us to import a lot of resources, but that I think we're just going to have to tank. Okay. Do I want to go even harder than this on plane production? No, I think I want more tank production. What kind of air forces are we facing here? Like, how many planes, planes have you got? Not many. Oh my lord. <laughs> okay. Uh, Poland? Not, not too bad. But <laughs> my lord. England has been utilizing their uh, their aircraft production group to its full effect. That known, 
L give me another line of fight. A whole nother line of fighters. It's going to be super intensive. On the, uh, on the oil and the rubber. But I think that is the way of the world right now. We need to we need to pivot hard towards planes. So for now, ramp up that importing, ramp up that French Indo-Chinese importing. There's basically no rubber. Hang on, let's check the resource map mode. I think I just saw some oil where I'm not used to it being. That's interesting. Ooh, there's so much oil here we can grab. But yeah, rubber-wise, essentially you have to go to Asia still. There's a little tiny bit down here, so you know that'll be good. But essentially, you have to go down here down here. So there's no rubber for us anytime soon. That's for sure. That being the case, uh, I would like to invent synthetic rubber refineries. Or do we just import it? Because this only produces four. They didn't change the text. <laughs> so they just they copy and pasted the description of a synthetic refinery from the base game which says this building provides the state with plus six oil and plus four rubber. And they just copy and pasted the and for rubber at the end. That's so lazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. They put loads of effort into this mod, I know. But that particular thing is very lazy. <laughs> that really amuses me. Alright. Uh, it's April though. We don't have time. I think we might just have to import our rubber. Uh, which is a shame. Uh, but I think it's the way it's got to be for now. Do... Maybe I should have helped Japan just on the basis that that would mean they would get more rubber and then we could import it from them. But we can import it from China. When we establish Vichy France, do they keep Indochina? I think it goes to Free France. I don't think we will establish Vichy France either, so. Okay, where do we want to go next? Here, ideally, but it's mountainous. Maybe if these guys all leave, we'll be able to push into the mountains. So... Getting there on political power. We need 475, remember. But I feel like we're we're almost ready. The, the, the tank division is uh, is how we want it. The mechanized division, we should just uh, we should switch back. That's close enough to uh, to 30 combat width for me, I think. I would also like to switch this up. I don't think we have any tankettes. The tankettes increase movement. They do, but only by a bit. Do, do, do. Mm, we could throw the combat engineers in there. Yeah. Yeah. We should consider putting the t combat engineers in here as well. Maybe in the place of... Uh, I don't know. The heavy artillery is so good. I think... Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We lose... We lose the field hospital on the on the tanks. Because I don't expect the tanks to take a huge number of casualties. I really want the logistics and then the main... Well, are the logistics needed? We haven't seen these supply issues recently, but we haven't been deploying, like, big tank armies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Logistics is a big, big issue. I hadn't realised. We have deployed, like... How many men do we currently have lined up? Yeah, we have a million men lined up on the border with Poland right now. So, like, I'm not... Shouldn't be that surprised. Let's send some more guys over to West Wall. And yeah, new guys uh, stopped deploying automatically to the front. I think this is probably enough infantry. Like Poland, like the infantry deal, do we need to deal with Poland? It's not going to be a big issue. I don't think. As long as we have some tanks ready to crush Danzig. Uh, so that the allies can't send in reinforcements. I think we'll be okay there. And we are going to do a... Uh, an invasion of uh, Scandinavia to avoid two big naval invasions to naval conflicts. It'll probably involve taking Denmark first, thereby cutting off the Danish belts, and then invading Sweden. Especially since Sweden has this sweet, sweet tungsten and chromium reserves up in uh, Trondledag. Should be good. Do, do, do. Let's just try. No. No, no, no. Okay. Oh, log will save there. Oh, maybe actually, with the support from from the uh, from the Chinese, with their negative breakthrough. <laughs> I wonder if that causes an overflow error, which causes them to take less damage than they should. Sorry, an underflow error, not obviously not an overflow error. Dun, dun. What is this? It's 
mountains too. Yeah. Well, there's only two of them. And our breakthrough is, you know, it's tasty. And we're finally getting that armor defense. That's very good. I feel like if our enemy had like almost any line anti-tank though, they'd punch straight through these. Let's just see. If we were to switch these to 100% Panzer Fours, how much armor would we have? Let's take a look-see here. We'd have 13, which is not bad. And for comparison, our infantry has a piercing of 12 already. Well, we do have a lot of uh, a lot of artillery in our the guys, though. But if we were to, like, throw in some support anti-tank... Oh, we haven't actually upgraded our anti-tank, have we? But these guys already have loads of piercing. Okay. It's the infantry, isn't it? Well, no, there's only point one from them. Is it these guys? No. Where is our piercing coming from? I don't understand. Is it just all these guys? No. How are these guys giving point one piercing each, and yet somehow we have 12 piercing? Like it's not all coming from this thing I just added. There's some funky maths going on here. Is it you? No. Where... Am I missing something? Please tell me if I'm missing something, because it looks to me like our piercing should be essentially zero. It should be, uh, in fact, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, point, uh, 1.2, minus 0 0.1 for each of these, 1.8, minus, it should be, it should be essentially zero, and um, yet it's 12. Yes, I don't understand that. Uh, we'll see. But if they, if the enemy equally has some funky maths on their piercing, then, uh, how much piercing do you have? You have 1.6. So I guess they just don't have the artillery that we have. We, I mean, I put a serious investment in our infantry, I think, by pumping them full of this artillery and giving them all these artillery battalions. I love this song. It's so good. What's this one called? 0.7. This is... Forever. It's a good song. One of the best songs on the soundtrack, I think. Remembering this is the Rome 2, this sorry, the Rome 1 soundtrack I'm talking about. One of the favourite games I played when I was a child. Such a good game. Right, yes, we definitely want to go to the upgraded ones. We just dialed back hard on infantry production. Which means it's a good time to switch. Uh, because we won't be losing as much production efficiency, so we have less factories on it. And we have a big def a bit, sorry, a big surplus, which means we can tank the loss in uh, production efficiency. Let me delete your orders for a minute so I can manually control you. We're going to try and punch through somewhere on this darn mountain range. Oh. Oh, yeah, counterattack potential. Well, there's all these guys leaving the tile, but... Come on, come on. If the Chinese could just give me some serious support here and move in from the north. We're not breaking through there. I feel like just sitting next to the port and waiting for them to make a mistake. Making them, waiting for them to slip up. What's this? What's the obstacle that we mark? Which is Austrian Czechoslovakia? No, okay, this is just random, stupid, caring too much about the German army. Solution for Danzig. It's not time. It's not time yet. We could go air production. Or army training. Ooh, this is different. Army training. 10% less division time. More recovery rate. More organization. More planning. More supply consumption. More consuming factories. Less factory output. That's interesting. That's an interesting proposition right there. Oh, yeah, and there's a whole bunch of... What? I didn't know this. Okay. Massive infrastructure effort. List in healthcare. Logistic core. All building construction is 2%. Speed up production. 10% production efficiency cap. What? For air accidents? Oh, I guess you're just producing less good stuff is the idea. That's really good. Woo. <laughs> like, I think once the war starts, we're going to go on to that forever. Invest in mass production. It's pretty good. Switch time. To the front. That's rubbish. <laughs> That's really bad. Um, weekly national unity plus 15%. That just must just, must just mean flat plus 15% national unity. It requires you have zero. 
Okay, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it does mean 15% a week, but you can only do it until you get above zero. Well, we could just go on air production. I love that moment in this song. Make sure they are not ashamed. But we should really wait for production efficiency to be higher, because at the moment we're just buffing a really low number. Okay. I never knew this song was in the soundtrack until I heard it in the in the official soundtrack track. <laughs> I'm not sure there's much else we want to do. I mean this one. 20% buff, why not? Description. Let's get... <clears throat> Reinforce rates, not hugely important right now. Supply consumption down, that's exactly what I think we need right now. Let's let them plan, let them reorg, and we'll see what we can do about Fuzzao. Yeah, okay, so that's a problem, because suddenly now, we're going to have a new thing in here. Snipers, we need 4,000 snipers, which is a problem. <laughs> so, snipers. Car 98 with an 8x. <laughs> Cody will want it. Okay, let's bump that to the top. Bump that above. Here's probably a good spot to put it. Uh, I don't know how many factories we'll need to build this. How much does it take? Costs? Only 0.1. What is one factory's output per day? 6.4, but that's right now. Because that's affected by all kinds of stuff. I don't know what the base is. We're having that song again, for sure. Sorry, it's scrolling to the right because I just uh, switched off to a different tab by moving you know, off the right-hand side of the screen. Uh, let's put four on it and just see how long it'll take if we only have four. Anything else we need? More hard attack could be nice. Better infantry guns. But honestly, I kind of don't want this. Actually, wait. No, this is good. Because the tech gives us the bonuses, even if we're not building the better gun. And then we just have the option to build the better gun. The vision recovery rate is very important. Because my problem with the switching to the new gun is it's going to tank our production efficiency. But, does this give us better attention? No, what is it that gives us... Uh, limited exports is good. That does kill our attention. Yeah, I think the laws I've gone with basically have big factory output, low retention. So, switches are just very painful for us, basically. So, let these guys leave. And then we'll see what we can do about Feng Zhao. Fuzz how? I don't know. Okay. Come on. Get out of there. And you too, please, sir. In two days, we'll try without. With support, could happen. Ooh, it's promising. This could spell the end for several hundred thousand brave Japanese soldiers desperately trying to hold this, uh, this pocket in the south. But I'm afraid your commanders have failed you. My Japanese friends, they have given you a terrible strategical <laughs> shape. Ooh, but... Ooh! The, <laughs> the Michael 2 HQ radio. Cool. Uh, which upgrades these by giving us more planning speed and stuff. That's cool. Did, uh, so did this just go up in the amount of raw organization it grants? Not sure. And do we now have a deficit because of them as well? Yeah, not producing HQ radios. And how many do we need? Oh, it's actually 10k. Okay. And how many HQ radios do we need? 54. What? What? This needs HQ equipment 5 and 1 HQ radio. Okay. Maybe they're real expensive? No. Okay. And they cost 0 aluminium each. Interesting. Maybe it's 0.1. Looks like it would still be one. It would still be pretty low. Well, we need 10,000 of these. Each one factory working at full efficiency is going to give... Working at 100% production efficiency would give uh, seven a day. So if we put 10 factories on it, it'll take 70 days. So we should be enough. Four should be enough. This is super cheap. I think one factory like might be enough. Like to cover it forever. Let's dial back on the uh, the mechanized site just to get this stuff started. Make sure they are not ashamed. It's 
just such a good line. I hope this is actually coming through. I'll just sound totally nuts. <laughs> it might be that the uh, <laughs> the music's not going through because I've put it so low because I'm so paranoid about drowning myself out. Yeah, this uh, when you're fighting someone, an enemy in a circle like this, uh, it really mucks with the front line mechanics. Yeah, we'll let them leave and then we'll push them in. We just want to push them away from the ports. Hopefully, these militia can hold down here. In fact, let's not let's not base our war on hope. Let's send down a tank. Yeah, Count Christo, 2018. Don't base your wars on hope. Base them on tanks. And on that glorious note, <laughs> I'm going to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. And the next time, we'll wipe out these guys here. We'll move north. And it's June of 39, so uh, a solution for Danzig is just over the horizon. But until then, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.